Postmodernism created an explosion of intriguing, ironic, kitschy, occasionally terrible buildings. But it was a moment from which you might argue that architecture never really recovered. We're still living in a postmodern moment. Charles Jenks famously suggested that modernism died on the 15th of July at 3.32 p.m. with the dynamiting of the pruitt Igo building in St. Louis, Missouri. It's an image that's become indelible in the mythology of the end of modernism. Jenks was an architectural historian, a designer, a landscape artist, and the author of a number of books, including The Language of Postmodern Architecture in 1977. It was a book which defined a new moment and marked the end of modernism. Jenks thought architecture had become denuded of any kind of symbolic program, and that meant people couldn't relate to it. They couldn't find any meaning in it. They couldn't find any pleasure in it. He believed that late modernism, the architecture of the 1960s and 70s, had become monolithic and a little bit dumb with a lack of message and meaning. Postmodernism is everything that happens after modernism. Suddenly the whole of the past is opened up as a mine of references. It allowed a complete break from modernism with its very minimal language, its stripped down aesthetic. Suddenly architects and designers were able to create a kind of magpie culture, picking bits from what they liked in the past. And the freedom that it led to created an explosion of intriguing, ironic, kitschy, occasionally terrible buildings. The Cosmic House was Charles Jenks' built manifesto for postmodernism. He designed it with his wife Maggie in 1978. Maggie was a garden designer and historian and was very influential in the ideas and the execution of the house. It's in this neighborhood of 1840s, 1850s villas in Holland Park, which is a kind of genteel, originally bohemian, now rather wealthy neighborhood in West London. There are signs that this is not an everyday house. You can see this side extension with its wavy roof, which was designed originally to evoke a tent, but also to avoid the boughs of a tree which was overhanging the house. And you can see the front door, which is a little curious with its proportions based on the human body. Jenks believed that the great architectures of the past all had a kind of coherent worldview embodied in their fabric. And for him at that time, it was our relationship to the cosmos, something the ancients had indulged in but had been lost in modern architecture. So the cosmic house is based around the solar system with the stairs at its heart. This represents the spiraling, orbiting sun, the moon and the earth, a kind of dance between the planets. And on top of that, the architectures of the past, so there are echoes and shadows everywhere of fragments of architecture. Double coding as an idea is absolutely central to how Charles Jenks saw postmodernism. But what is double coding? It's a notion that architecture can operate on two levels. On one level, it's just about the way something looks. On another level, there might be layers of irony, of kitsch, of references to historic projects and buildings, glimpses of things from the past. So, in a way, you see it here. The references to historic architecture all around me are flattened out, made cartoonish. But if you delve into the symbols, the meaning, the iconography, you can see it's quite a serious exploration of the way the world works, the way architecture is developed, the structural systems, and so on. 
but you can also enjoy it as a 2D cartoonish surface. That's the double coding. In this room, Jenks introduces the idea that people's houses should reflect their lifestyles, the way they want to live. Here, in the library, he traces the history of architecture through the books and reflects that into the bookshelves. You have the architecture of late modernism with grids all around, the New York skyscrapers with pointy spires and elaborate crowns. You could see it as an amphitheatre of books, and the books form an audience. They're lining up to hear what we have to say. There's a kind of irony in that. He said he was a critic who architects rather than an architect who critiques. Text is always at the heart of what he does. Jenks suggested that every architect should have their own motive. Every self-respecting designer should have a kind of aesthetic device which they could apply to their works. For him, it was the Jenksiana, which was this particular window shape. It's a sort of domed top with a square of base. Sometimes it looks like a mushroom, sometimes like a face, sometimes it's squished into a kind of parasol shape. But it's always recognizably this sort of modular window form. It's a little bit like the Palladian window, which appears in a lot of English country houses and Venetian villas from the 16th and 17th century, which was a sort of arched window with two rectangular side lights. So in a way, you might suggest it's a reference to classical architecture and history. And he used it everywhere, in his furniture, in his doors, even in his landscapes. Charles Jenks was very keen to bring his friends in to help design aspects of the house. And those friends were architects and designers who were at the forefront of postmodernism. So the fireplaces were designed by Michael Graves, an American architect and friend of theirs. The jacuzzi was designed by Piers Goff, who was a young leading proponent of British postmodernism. Eduardo Palozzi, who was another close friend and designed the mosaic at the bottom of the staircase. And Palozzi appears again in a bus downstairs, sculpted by Celia Scott, who was another friend. So all these voices were brought into the house. It's Charles's vision, but it's a vision based on a wider view of postmodernism. And it's tolerant enough to be able to accommodate other voices and become richer because of that. And how did postmodernism end? Well, you might argue that Terry Farrell, who became one of the great proponents of British postmodernism and designed the famous TVAM building in Camden with its egg cups on the parapets, ended up designing a building for the intelligence services on the riverside at Vauxhall. It's a building which is famously blown up in the James Bond movies. And if you wanted an example of where postmodernism lost its sense of irony, well, there it is. The house was listed in 2018 at grade one, which is the highest possible level of protection. And it illustrates, in a way, how the house is the most complete example of postmodernism arguably surviving in Britain. And that reflects a revival of interest in postmodernism, something that we've seen in architecture as well, where younger architects have picked up on the possibilities of postmodernism, the kind of freedom it offers to pick and choose from the past and to design with an intent of meaning.